Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making this gorgeous floral resin piece. I really hope you enjoy. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's LJ here. Today I'm going to be making something using this square mould um, and some pressed flowers. Um, if you would like to watch this, then please enjoy. Okie dokie, so I made sure my mould was clean and I'm going to pour in the first layer of resin. I'm doing a very thin layer um, because I don't want this piece to be hugely thick and heavy. So I'm just going to pour in this thin layer and I am scraping out my cup as much as possible because resin's expensive and I don't want to lose any y'all. So I scrape out as much as I can and as you can see it's not quite covering the base, it will spread out slowly but I'm going to give it a little helping hand I'm just going to manipulate the mould so that the resin reaches every corner um, and in doing this you can often see if you've not got enough resin because once you do this there may be some gaps where the resin pulls apart from itself and if that happens it just means you haven't got enough in there. I'm then going to pop any bubbles from the pour and the manipulation in the mould and we're going to leave this to cure for about six seven hours. Next I'm going to add some pressed flowers now I knew I wanted to use this fern because I just, oh it's beautiful, and this large pansy. Now both of these are from my garden that I have pressed myself. Um, I then also found two smaller pansies that I thought would look cute in the empty corners. Um, I'm absolutely in love with pansies at the moment, I just think they're so so cute. Um, so I've popped these on and then what I'm going to do is I'm very gently just going to press the flowers into the resin. Um, I don't want to break them, but I want to make sure they adhere to this first layer. Um, with when you work with flowers in resin, they will they will float to the top. They love floating, and then they'll move and they might break because dried flowers are very delicate. And if the um, resin moves too much, then it can break the flowers apart, which you don't want. So what we've done is we've let the first layer become tacky. We're then popping these on so that these will stick down to that first layer. I also wanted to add some baby's breath into those gaps. This will be a clear piece. So although it looks white at the moment and it looks complete, once you take it out of the mould it will be clear because I'm only using clear resin. So I wanted to pop some of the baby's breath in just to fill some of those gaps um, and just give it a really nice sort of feel overall. Once these are in, we're going to leave this for another six to eight hours to make sure that that first layer is completely cured and once that is completely cured we can pour our next layer on um, and as I said this is done in layers just to make sure that it doesn't sort of rise and float away you want your flowers to stay where you've put them so this is about eight hours later I do apologize for the flicking so I've just put another layer of clear resin on top again I'm going to scrape out my cup because I want to use every little last bit resin is expensive and then going to very gently move it around and then we're going to pop any bubbles with the heat gun and then leave this 24 hours so it is fully fully cured so every single part of this is completely cured because you don't want to take it out too early and ruin all your hard work hey guys we are back with the mold off square floral piece so here is our piece now currently the um Baby's breath is ever so slightly out of the top of the resin because I've built this this way up there will be a slight lip anyway so it will get a top coat and that top coat will hide these um, so let's have a look at this we'll take the uh, the mould out of the oh I love how nice and clear this is love it love it love it love it that is gorgeous there's the back and these few bubbles are the reason where that where possible I work the other way up so then I can pop bubbles on top a lot easier um, but it does leave me with this little ridge because I haven't filled the mould completely but then I get to coat the top anyway so it's, it's totally up to you how you work it I see a lot of people ask should I work face up face down it's up to you some moulds obviously where they've got a shape um, so for example let me grab this one. 
So for example, this one has a um, yeah, has a debossed shape on the front. So this is going to be the front. So I have to work in this one face down. Um, but where there isn't a shape, where it's just like you know, a square, a circle, an oval, um, whichever like that, I tend to work face up if I'm doing things like florals, which are delicate. If I'm using things that aren't quite so delicate, I can move them around a lot easier and pop the bubbles. But you don't want to move these around too much because you can end up breaking the flower. So that's why I, with these ones, tend to work face up. And then people say, oh, you get a lip and you get things, that's fine. I top coat to get rid of that lip, which then means these bits that are ever so slightly out. I don't know if you can catch on camera, but they're out. Um... Bit too, no, I don't think you can, but this is ever, literally ever so slightly out. I mean, I can feel a, a slight lump when I brush it over with my finger. That's right. Okie dokie, so this is how I top coat my pieces. I have got an old um, sellotape roll there, which I'm putting the piece on. And I'm going to pour some resin into the centre. I only pour a little bit, because I'm not doing a huge dome. So I'm going to then use my silicon brush to just spread the resin out and take it to the edges. At this point, I don't have enough resin on here, but you don't do this with too much resin. Resin will go where you put it. It won't go somewhere on its own unless you make it do it, if that makes sense. So with this piece, I know that I don't need to tape the sides or the back because I have that ever so slight lip. And I know that if I'm delicate enough when doing edges like this, so I'm only using a small amount, it's not gonna overflow the edges. So I add a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the rest of the edges and you just want to drag it to the edge and make sure that it sort of bonds with that lip. Um, and then when you add a little bit more, you can fill it up slightly more. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and you can see I'm just pushing very gently the resin right up to the edge all the way around. And this helps to make sure that you don't get any gaps or pits or bubbles when you do this. So I've done that. I'm then going to add a little bit more resin leave it to spread out fill the area and see if that's enough and then i'll just keep doing this to make sure that there is enough resin and that it is fully covered give it a slight move around so that it is even make sure it's reaching all of those corners and then because it's not in a mold um, i can pop bubbles with my torch i wouldn't use this in a mold because it is too much heat but with a piece like this it's absolutely perfect um, so yes, yeah, so there's that one. That is gorgeous. My only downside is that this pansy seemingly was a bit too fragile and broke in the resin. I'm thinking the resin has moved as it was curing and this pansy has split. But that is absolutely fine. I still like it. So there is that one. Thank you very much for spending time with me today, guys. Keep crafting and I'll see you soon. Bye.